all of this is related to this idea of dietary inflammatory index. And just to pause for a minute to think about what inflammation is, <clears throat> you know, inflammation is um, uh, caused by uh, irritation or damage to a system, which results in these free radicals. <clears throat> free radicals really are just electrons that are looking for a, a partner or a pair. <clears throat> and as they're looking for a paired electron, they damage more uh, cellular structures, causing a spiraling of inflammation. So lifestyle choices create free radicals, which drives inflammation. I often think about free radicals like uh, socks, that uh, when you put your socks in the laundry and you start folding socks or you're looking for socks in the morning, there's a missing sock. And so it creates a lot of extra energy looking for that, that pair of socks. In the same way, those free radical individual electrons look for a pair, and in doing so, they create damage that causes inflammation. They've done a lot of research looking at the effects of low-grade systemic inflammation because of these dietary and lifestyle choices, and they found that there are at least 27 different diseases directly linked to uh, inflammation. They include this list here, de depression, mental illness, cardiovascular disease, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, et cetera. Um, all linked to this inflammatory index. As the inflammatory index goes up, um, so does the risk of all of these diseases. This inflammatory process can be dramatically reduced with uh, a shift in diet, as we see in this, this um, pictogram here, from a <clears throat> westernized dietary pattern to a healthy plant-based dietary pattern. Inflammation can also be triggered by something called endotoxins. So in animal products, which people often choose to eat because of the, um, the protein, there are a number of inflammatory mediators, including endotoxin. Endotoxin is the outer covering of a piece of bacteria. And so they did a randomized control trial looking at uh, the, the effects of endotoxin on individuals. When people were exposed to endotoxin, in the top we see two spikes of inflammation um, about two to three hours after they uh, were exposed to the endotoxin. So the body becomes inflamed two to three hours after the meal. But it was very interesting because inflammation is systemic, not just local. We see at the bottom that at the same time period, two to three hours, there was an increase in social disconnection and depressed mood the brain is also inflamed. And so in this way, we can begin to understand that this whole systemic inflammatory process is driving not only inflammation in the arteries of the heart, but causes people to feel more depressed and less connected. And then what happens? People look to feel better and they choose foods that give them a little boost, often sugar, fat, and salt. And so they eat foods that are unhealthy, that cause inflammation. And in just a few more hours, they're feeling bad again. So they feel bad. They're eating foods to feel better, causes more of an inflammatory response, and then they feel bad again. So these are driven by free radicals at that atomic level. <clears throat> but the good news is that because there are so many antioxidants in plants, antioxidant is a uh, chemical nature of a um, of a plant, oftentimes it gives color to the blackberries and the greens of the arugula in the salad. Those phytochemicals and antioxidants have extra electrons that they can contribute to the inflammatory process. So as we're eating this beautiful salad, your body has more electrons to donate to those free radicals, which binds them and prevents the inflammatory process from persisting. Secondarily, and this is the, the beauty of food, it's not just that uh, antioxidants take care of the free radical uh, issues, but the antioxidants and phytochemicals um, turn off a key step in inflammation at the genetic level, the NF-kappa-beta, which has been linked to all of these diseases and more than 400 different genes in the inflammatory process. And then a level below that, which is even a more amazing, that the fiber in the plants that is not digested by our guts 
is digested by the microbiome. The microbiome, the bacteria eat that fiber because that's their favorite food. And as they're eating the food, they produce waste products. One of those is a short chain fatty acid called butyrate. Butyrate works locally to tighten up the tight junctions in the gut, reduce inflammation, reduce the risk of colon cancer, but it also enters the bloodstream, balances blood sugars for four hours, and it travels and turns off the inflammatory switch as well. And so at multiple levels through that beautiful healthy salad from reducing uh, free radicals because of the donation of electrons to turning off NF kappa beta and the fiber being used to produce butyrate to turn off inflammation, multiple levels, the body reduces inflammation because you had took time to enjoy a beautiful, delicious salad. Um, we also see that those same phytochemicals that you would find um, maybe in a cup of tea, curcumin, an Indian meal, um, a nice curry dish, broccoli, sulfurophane, <clears throat> they work um, inside of the brain to reduce inflammation through a number of mechanisms. And by reducing neuroinflammation, it improves mood, reduces depression, anxiety, improves mental clarity, uh, mental function, and some tests is actually shown to improve school performance and testing. And it's amazing to think that, you know, people every day are eating food just like this. And to those of us that are healthy, we look at this food and it has zero appeal. But for most people, this looks delicious. But when we think about it, it's delicious just for a few minutes on the tongue. And then the pleasure of that food is gone. But for hours after that, the body is inflamed. The body's on fire. Um, damage is being created throughout all the cellular structures. Genetic switches are being turned on and turned off <clears throat> immediately after that meal. But when we look at this food, it looks vibrantly alive. And the colors are different. The look and feel of this food is different. And even the contrast of the two pictures, I think, directs us in a little better way to understanding the benefits of plants. And we can look and almost feel the impact of those plants on our body. There was a very interesting study that, again, highlights the benefit of the antioxidants in dark colored fruits and vegetables. Um, this was a study that looked at the um, impact of low quality, um, and that just simply means lower density of micronutrients in lighter colored fruits and vegetables versus darker colored fruits and vegetables. And we can see that after two weeks measurement of inflammation in the high antioxidant group, dark colored fruits and vegetables went down dramatically but in the lower antioxidant group, they had an uptick in inflammation. Their bodies were not managing inflammation as effectively as the group that was getting food with a higher degree of antioxidants. Again, the donation of the electrons, um, probably more important than we realize, but those phytochemicals again turning off those inflammatory switches. So it just gives us some direction on making sure our plates are are colored with dark colored fruits and vegetables. We can still eat these other fruits and vegetables. They're absolutely delicious and have a lot of nutritional value. But again, just focusing and making sure we're getting lots of dark colored fruits and vegetables as well. So as we move into more of an epigenetic uh, level, again, this study just shows us that 90% of the diseases today, uh, genetics is not the major cause of those diseases. It's lifestyle. And it's a, it's a huge misunderstanding for people today because they believe that there's no hope that they don't need to change because it's their family genetics that leads to the diseases. In fact, I was asking a gentleman um, how long he wanted to live, just trying to inspire him that, you know, you can live a long, long, healthy life. And he said, I'm only going to live to 48. I said, 48? Why are you only going to live to 48? He said, because every man in my family has died uh, before age 50. And so he was assuming that because of the genetics of his family, his lifespan would be the same. And it's a very limiting and uh, incredibly um, sad uh, belief system. But the good news is that because of our understanding of epigenetics, the layer above the genes that is affected by our lifestyles that can turn on and turn off the genetic switches, 
Um, we understand that epigenetics can be influenced by lifestyle and can dramatically overcome uh, even the most significant genetic susceptibilities to lifestyle diseases. Uh, Dr. Michael Greyer once said that genetics loads the gun and our lifestyle choices pull the trigger. And so that can even be uh, on the health side, we can have, we can dramatically overcome these genetic limitations by um, making better lifestyle choices. This is just to highlight that, you know, it's our activity levels, it's our food, it's our consumption of television that creates fear. It's um, the uh, lack of sunlight exposure and being outside versus activity, stress reduction, peaceful living, plant-based diets, which is the, the solution for so many things, it really solves 80% of the disease burden um, in, in America today. And this is, the, I think, it helps us understand the potential and the power of uh, epigenetics, that it's not just the single generation that's really impacted by this. It's the, the downstream generations that um, also receive either a blessing or a curse from the lifestyle choices of their parents and grand grandparents. And we can see on the top picture that the, um, the second generations are, are affected through a transgenerational effect. And in the bottom, it can be a third generation. Mother's lifestyle choices impact the fetus and the germ cells in the fetus, the eggs and the sperm. Childhood lifestyle exposures um, affect those genes, which then during um, uh, for fertile years, um, can be passed on to the next generation. And as that generation grows up and goes back to uh, carrying children, some of those multi-generational epigenetic effects from the lifestyle choices, food, stress, et cetera, uh, toxin exposure are carried on to the next generation. So the good news is that um, for all of us, if we make changes today, we can change our uh, epigenome today. But the really good news is for families that you can give an inheritance of good health by making different choices today. Healthy choices lead to a transgenerational inheritance of good health, vibrancy in life and disease protection. And really what happens is that through those choices and by turning on these genetic switches uh, and turning off the disease switches, we bend the curve on healthy aging. And this research study shows it's the healthy lifestyle, physical activity, epigenetic reprogramming through choices like polyphenols uh, in berries, soy polyphenols from edamame and, um, and soy products, tofu, block DNA, methyltransferase, sulforaphane found in bro bro broccoli normalizes DNA. <clears throat> and if we're not utilizing those healthy plants, we can have not only normal aging, but through unhealthy choices, premature aging where the cells actually break down at a faster rate. But the good news is it's all in our choices every day. And again, coming back to the idea that plants and fiber have an impact, you know, the, um, the digestion of these plants from the fiber, again, produces that short chain fatty acid butyrate, which not only turns off nf kappa beta and inflammation, but butyrate, um, impacts a number of gene expressions, including the expression of um, uh, in cancer, VEGF, which grows blood vessels into the cancer cells, increasing their growth rate and uh, ability to metastasize, reduces inflammation, improves insulin resistance, decreases the intestinal biosynthesis of cholesterol, upregulates the BDNF, which supports the connections inside of the brain, and um, activate stem cells. So the fiber that we're eating um, produces butyrate, which then goes to, to dramatically change the, um, the uh, genetic expression throughout our bodies. Kind of moving out of the nucleus of the cell into the cell itself and looking at some of the, the data, we see that there is um, uh, biologic versus, um, uh, versus uh, chronologic age. 
And so there's a key pathway when we look at this that um, that contributes to uh, more rapid or slower biologic aging. You know, we can be uh, 50 years old, but we our cells don't have to be 50, they can actually be younger. Or we can be 50 and our cells may be 70. One of the key pathways is autophagy. And so that's basically that as a cell ages, it undergoes a process of being broken down, chewed up, and then those materials are used to produce new cells. There are a number of key pathways in autophagy that are important for maintaining a healthy, younger biologic age. We see IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor 1, which is directly impacted by a whole food plant-based diet. <clears throat> the mTOR pathway is impacted by the phytochemicals, the colored chemicals in the plants exercise. And um, low diets uh, in methionine and leucine, which largely come from animal products. We see AMPK pathway is directly impacted by the sulforaphane in cruciferous vegetables like kale and broccoli. Sirtuins, um, which are impacted by uh, calorie restriction, doing some fasting every year by phytochemicals in my exercise. So again, just pointing out that inside of our cells, this key autophagy pathway is positively impacted by a whole food plant-based lifestyle. The powerhouses of the cell, the mitochondria, are also impacted. And we see that um, we can see that these powerhouses not only become more efficient, but their antioxidant capacity is improved. That's glutathione. And we also see that there's a biogenesis of mitochondria. So not only are the mitochondria that you have more efficient to generate more power, but we also see that the mitochondria increase in number. And so when they look at mitochondria in endurance athletes that are on a whole food plant, 